may be seated. Boy, looking around this morning is just nice. Some folks are returning already, and others are on the road and going to be with us back soon. And uh, so that's, that's always nice. Uh, did many of you have trouble getting through the gate this morning? If you had trouble, just let me see your hand. You did? Uh, well, listen, one of our good board people will work on that this week. Uh, about 30% of our folks here come through the gate on Sunday. And uh, we don't want you, they were, the, the day they were, I understand there was some pretty s serious challenges getting through the gate. So we will work on that. It's easier to golf than it is to go to church. <laughs> so, but uh, we'll, 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 hopefully, we'll, we'll solve that little problem by next week. Uh, oh, it's good to be in church, isn't it? Don't you just, don't you just love to be here? I, I love it. And uh, I'm glad you're here with me. Uh, it's not much, not much fun to go to church if you're by yourself, but it's your fun when other people are here. Uh, Bill read some very important words from John 14. I, I want to add to the reading this morning, if I may, from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 20 through 25, the Apostle Paul speaking, and then uh, back, back again uh, to the Gospels in, in Luke chapter 19. I want to read from there also, but 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God the world did not know God through wisdom, it pleased God through the folly of what we preach to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks seek wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and folly to Gentiles. But to those who are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. And Luke chapter 19, verse 41 and when he drew near, Jesus drew near the city and saw it, he wept over it, saying, Would that you, even you, had known on this day the things that make for peace. But now they are hidden from your eyes. For the days will come upon you when your enemies will set up a barricade around you and surround you and hem you in on every side and tear you down to the ground, you and your children within you. And they will not leave one stone upon another in you because you did not know the time of your visitation. I, I want to call your attention to that final word we just heard from Jesus. Because you did not know the time of your visitation. There's a little flippant proverb that says, what you don't know won't hurt you. <laughs> it's an alibi mostly. And uh, people use it as a little excuse because they don't know. And uh, so what you don't know uh, won't hurt you. And uh, it's kind of an excuse for ignorance. And uh, we sometimes say it because we have uh, learned that so much of what we do know has not really helped us. And there has grown up a feeling that a certain measure of ignorance is a good thing. If you don't know too much, it might be a good thing because the more you know, you might get more trouble if you know too many things so it's just better to kind of live in the fog and uh, just not quite uh, quite catch it all and, uh, and so what you don't know people want to say won't hurt you there's another old saying that says what you know would make a book and what you don't know would make a bigger book well that's certainly the case with me uh, I, don't claim, I don't have to claim uh, any uh, humility this morning to confess to you that there's a lot of stuff that I don't know, and uh, I think I might have a, a pretty good company in that. There's a lot of things that we just don't know, and uh, I think I can say with a degree of modesty that I'm an authority on ignorance. Uh, there's, there's, just, there's just a lot of stuff that never, 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 never uh, kind of caught on with me. But we're all ignorant people. If I were to write a book, uh, I would, uh, on, on ignorance, I would title the first chapter, What We Have Not Learned. There is so much of what we have not learned, and that would be a long chapter. 
on the things we have not learned. Uh, I, I, we, I could just talk forever about stuff that we don't know. Uh, but, and uh, I'm going to leave you some, uh, some natural thoughts and illustrations. And before we get through this morning, I'll put a cap on it and, and put the spiritual cap to the things that I'm trying to say. There was a rugged old gentleman who lived to be over 100 years old. And he was asked what he attributed to his long life and health. He said that he was glad before he was glad he was born before germs were invented. <laughs> he said, "I never worried about them because I never knew anything about them." And uh, so that he attributed his long life that he was born before germs. And uh, but and, and, and we know that that was foolish. But I'm I'm sure that uh, many of people are like that. They they just don't know what's going on, and so they don't have to worry about some things. Do you know that just a little over a hundred years ago? Surgeons would perform an operation after putting on their overalls because they didn't want to get any blood on their nice clothes. Uh, doctors didn't bother to wash their hands between patients and before delivering a baby. They had no idea that it had anything to do with the fact that many babies and mothers died. Dr. Joseph Lister, who died in 1912, that was just a just hundred years ago. Uh, Dr. Lister was the one who urged the washing of hands and using antiseptic techniques. The scientific tenets of bacteriology and microbiology introduced by Louis Pasteur were finally applied to obstetrics and medicine and surgery. And the engine, and, so, and you, nurse, you nurses would certainly know, the energy and the, the dynamic behind all this was Florence Nightingale, who came on the scene and, uh, and was encouraging that nurses be trained. They were just picking up anybody to go in and help the dying and the sick. That nurses be trained and a certain amount of cleanliness would be, be observed in the tending of the sick in the hospitals. Between 1930 and 1940, uh, that, that was probably a pretty good time to be born. Any of you, well, yeah. Uh, because that was, that was a swing time between 1930 and 1940. There was a tremendous sh rising curve in the longevity rates, and that was due to the widespread usage of antibiotics and much improved standards of cleanliness and hygiene and sanitation. Think of the millions of people who lost their lives or died early or died in infancy or at birth because, because they just didn't know. And uh, so they lived in ignorance. And, and these people did not have the chance that we did later in life when some of these things that were, seemed to us to be so practical. Uh, President James Garfield was shot by an, an assassin in July 1881 and he died two months months later because his doctors could not agree where the bullet was in him that was they didn't have x-ray and so they didn't know where the bullet was uh, doctor uh, uh, President Garfield's personal physician was Dr. Bliss and there was another specialist named Dr. Wise you get those names in your head Dr. Bliss personal physician and Dr. Wise Dr. Bliss said the, the bullet was in one area of his body and Dr. Wise said it was in another area of his body body and they argued for two months on on where the bullet was and Garfield died without ever finding the bullet in his body and some uh, rather caustic um, uh, writer reporter quipped in a Washington newspaper where ignorance is bliss tis folly to be wise that's why I wanted you to listen to those doctors' names. Uh, <laughs> but uh, ignorance. Uh, ignorance. Garfield, President Garfield died because of ignorance. And much illness of uh, mind and body grows out of fear. And most fears grow out of ignorance. And what people fear most is the unknown. What we do not know or understand. The shadows of evil that lurk in the darkness. 
primitive people live their lives in fear and superstition because they don't know and they see these lurking shadows and these these tales that have been passed down to them and they're living in fear because of their ignorance and if they knew things they could be liberated but they don't know things and so they live in that kind of oppression and fear we pride ourselves in our knowledge that we have out that we have outlived the age of superstition but you want wonder sometimes have we really moved far beyond some of the superstitious things of life Edison said that we don't know one millionth part of one percent about anything uh, that was quite a statement by Thomas Edison we have made a few small starts and a lot of guesses but think that we have not, the things that we have not learned, those are the things that continue to trouble and to hurt us. For ages, humans shivered in the cold. They didn't know that there were great deposits right under their feet of coal and oil that could come and could warm them. They didn't know that. They lived for centuries without knowing about these resources that were there for them. Uh, for ages, men broke their backs trying to labor, and then they found out that there's power sources in the sun and in the wind and in the atom and all of these wonderful things that have been released to us and people didn't know anything about them and there's so much yet to know a large part of the world's population is still living in fear and in poverty and the mercy of recurring famine because they do not know how to utilize the resources of the earth we're just beginning a little bit now to discover how 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 we can solve some of the world's hunger problems through through food production and through through some of these wonderful things that are the, 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 the science of the soil and, and the energy of the sun and some of these wonderful things. They've been here all the time. We just didn't know it. Now, my second chapter in the book on ignorance, my book on ignorance, would be what we, what, what we have mislearned. Not what we haven't learned, but what we have mislearned. Ignorance is bad enough. But when you mix ignorance with prejudice, you got a big problem. Did you know, and it wasn't, you know, terrible, terribly long ago, people thought that the earth was the center of the universe. And I think some people still think it is. <laughs> and they think that uh, there's a certain group of people that might be the center of the universe even in that earth. And that, and that we were the center of the whole thing right here. Everything revolved around the earth. People believe that. Uh, and they believe that the earth was flat. I was just reading the Bible this week again, and I read that verse. Boy, I wish Christopher Columbus could have read the Bible, saved him that trip. Uh, because it, 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 in Isaiah, it says, it is he who sits on the circle of the earth. Here, way back in Isaiah, he said the earth was round. And uh, so all, the, all people had to do was really read the Bible, and they would have found that the earth wasn't flat. A lot of people thought the earth was flat. They'd watch the boat go off the edge of the earth out there. And, but it, that was that was mislearning and misunderstanding. And uh, it's, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a terrible thing to live that way. A book critic... Uh, was condemned uh, for a certain book that it was unfit for the local college library. So the author wrote him a nice letter asking him to reconsider his opinion. He said, in my next edition, I will remove the illicit love scene, sex scene that was in that book if you will endorse the book and the, the guy that was condemning said I will be happy to do that if you will do that the author wrote back to him and said well that satisfies me very much just to know that you've never read my book because there was not any illicit scene in my book <laughs> I have an acquaintance that was attending the University of Oregon and uh, the professor every day would rail against the Bible although he had admitted to the class that he had never thoroughly and fully read the Bible. He had never read the Bible in its entirety. One day, a student in class asked him a question, and he said, well, I don't feel qualified to answer that. 
I've only read a book or two on the subject, and I really don't feel qualified that I could talk and give you a legitimate answer. This acquaintance of mine piped up in class. He said, Professor, every day you have been talking about the Bible, a book that you said you haven't read, and giving opinions, and now you can't give an opinion on a book you have read. So, but, but, but people want to live in that kind of darkness. Um, there were people 2,000 years ago who killed our Lord Jesus on a cross. They had strong opinions about him. They knew for sure that he was subversive. They thought they were doing the world a great favor by getting rid of him. And so they took him and nailed him to a cross and killed him, thinking that they were doing the world a wonderful service. And that wonderful Savior of ours that was hanging and dying on that cross said, Father, forgive them, because they don't know what they're doing. They, they, they don't have an understanding. They're ignorant. And we look back at the ignorance of the past, and uh, we see all of these great mistakes that were made. But somehow, here we are today, reaching forward and trying to discover God's great blessings for us. Now, I'll just put one more chapter in my book on ignorance. Uh, and I, th I think the third chapter in my book would be what we refuse to learn. There are those today who optimistically assume that the only reason that people behave badly is that because they're ignorant. Horace Mann came on the scene and said, if we will build more educational facilities, if we will build more schools and colleges, we will educate people and we will resolve all of our problems. We, 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 built, we built a college on every high hill. We, we developed education and we are creating more criminals today than we've ever had in the past. Education, my friends, is not the answer to the world's needs. We, it's not a head transformation that's going to solve our problems. It's a heart transformation. We've got to get God in our hearts to change our hearts. The Bible says that the heart is desperately wicked. And we need a heart transplant. <laughs> we, we, we need God to come and do something in our hearts and change our hearts. That's what changed our behavior. Education isn't going to change our behavior. But our, our heart is going to be changed by the power and the presence of God. Uh, and we, 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 we still do that. We're letting, uh, we're letting our uh, uh, hearts, uh, our heads get ahead of our hearts. I, I want to ask you a rhetorical question this morning. Uh, I've thought about it. I don't have an answer. That's why I'm asking you. When, when, when Adam was given the choice, I wish I was just sitting down here with you this morning. This would be more fun to sit and visit with you. When Adam was, Adam was given the choice to eat of the tree, he said, you can eat of the tree of life, but at the present time, at least at the present time, do not eat from the tree of knowledge. And that's, that's my question. And Adam didn't listen to God, and he went out and ate of the tree of knowledge, and paradise was lost. See, I don't think I, I don't have the answer. I'm just sitting here visiting with you. Because if I had the answer, I wouldn't have sat down. Oh, no. Uh, uh, but that, that knowledge that was open to him of good and evil caused him to lose at that moment what God had for him. He took the bite and paradise was lost. When we're still doing that. We let our minds get ahead of our hearts. We have knowledge about things, but we don't have much wisdom about them. We know how to make the world a neighborhood, but we don't know how to make it a brotherhood. We know how to make an atom bomb, but we, don't, we know how to make it go off, but we don't know how to keep it from going off. Uh, we know the facts, but we don't know the truth. We know how to control forces, but we don't know how to control ourselves. 
And this moral ignorance has brought us into the most precarious position we have ever faced in human history. This kind of ignorance is what the Bible calls sin. The refusal to know the truth of God. And the Bible looks us straight in the eye and tells us that without God's wisdom, our hearts are lost. I, I must really be, I must really have some, some problems in my thinking. Because I read in the paper this morning, well, I read, I read several things in the paper this morning. Uh, what did I read this morning? That there's 80,000, who that one got me, 80,000 children in California that are not living with a mother or father. Uh, that's, that's sad, isn't it? But I can't understand a girl that gets murdered up here, and now they have proven that she was pregnant. So the guy's going to get charged with double murder. I can't figure that one out. I can't figure out why Scott Peterson is in prison for double murder because he killed his wife and a, who was pregnant. I, I can't quite figure that out because you can take that same girl and have an abortion last week. See, that's what I can't figure out. So you help me with all of your wisdom. You can help me because I don't understand that kind of stuff. How you can have a double murder, but if she'd have had an abortion the week before, it's okay. Uh, anyway, you, you help me and pray for me. I'm, I'm going on vacation, so I'll, I'll get my head cleaned up, maybe. <laughs> um, no wonder that we don't know the truth, because the only way we're ever going to know the truth is to know Him. He, Pilate asked him, in his, when Jesus stood before Pilate, he said, what's the truth? And Jesus had already declared, I am the way, the truth, and the life. You may look at a bowl uh, and believe that there's sugar in it. And you may take it innocently, like they did at Dickie Barbecue. Did you read, hear that on the news? This week, Dickie Barbecue in Utah. Uh, one of the... One of the Innocent workers took some poison lye and put it in a sugar bowl. It looked like sugar. It, 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 it has the appearance of sugar. So she put it in the sugar bowl, and a lady came in and put it in her iced tea and burned herself and was violently and terribly injured and ill. The, uh, they, I, they, I don't think they're going to do anything to the worker. Uh, because she was innocent about it. But you see, you can think, you can think something, and it, it can destroy you. What you don't know, and this is my bottom line this morning, what you don't know may hurt you. God has some things he wants you to know, and I'm, I leave them with you this morning. He wants you to know that he loves you. That's the first thing he wants you to know. God loves you. No matter what's going on in the past, no matter where you came from, no matter what your lineage, uh, no matter how you've been treated, uh, no matter what you may have got involved in, God loves you today. He loves you with a, a, a compassion and a passionate love so much that he sent his son to the cross, allowed his son to go to the cross to pay the price for your sins. That's how much God loves you, and he wants you to know that. He wants you to know that he loves you. He wants you to know also that judgment is coming, that there will come a day it's appointed unto all of us, the Bible says, to die. That's a fact. We're all going to die, and then the Bible says we're going to face the judgment. So he wants you to know that there's judgment coming. He wants you to know that there is a law of harvest. That whatsoever we sow, that's what we reap. You sow good stuff, you're going to reap good stuff. You sow evil stuff, you're going to reap evil stuff. There's a, there's a law of harvest. It's in nature and it's in the world of, of the spiritual. That whatever we sow, we ultimately will reap. God also wants you to know that all good people do not go to heaven. You knew that? Yes. All good people don't go to heaven. And, and he also wants you to know that all bad people don't go to hell. 
He wants you to know today that there's only one way to get to heaven, and it's not by good works. It's not by joining this church or any other church. It's not going through ordinances, but it's having a relationship with a living Christ that he has come as your personal savior because Jesus said it, you must be born again. And we've got to have that transformation of life. And I, I'm, I'm, I get a little ups, disturbed because everybody's going to heaven today. But I'll tell you, friends, it's not going to heaven. Everybody's not going to heaven. And I get a little, uh, little disturbed. Well, isn't it nice that now they are at peace? How do you know? If they don't know Jesus, they're not at peace. Uh, it's, 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 it's not a good thing. So that's why we need to know today that we have been brought into a relationship with Jesus Christ. And that's what breaks my heart because there's a lot of good people around me that don't know Jesus and there's a lot of good people that I know that are not going to heaven if they don't know him because Jesus said there's only one way to get there I'm the way and no, there's no way to get to the Father except through me is that is that being uh, uh, pretty straight but that's, but that's what Jesus said and I'm a follower of Jesus Christ and I want to I want everybody to know this wonderful life and peace that comes it's a, there's a great peace to know that you are ready to meet eternity and you're ready to meet the future and we can we can have that peace isn't it great and I've often said this I've often said it and I hope that it's I'm saying it truthfully from my heart because I just love the peace that I have found in Jesus Christ and I've said before if there was no heaven if there was no hell I would still want to be a Christian because I got so much peace and I got so much joy just by knowing Jesus but there's some eternal results by knowing him because he said I'm going to go and prepare a place for you that where I am you're going to be with me and you're going to be part of what I'm doing throughout all eternity isn't that a great hope and that's our hope for tomorrow and our hope for the future so it really does matter what we think and what you don't know might hurt you but I've tried to help you this morning that what we do know is that there's a God who loves us and has provided eternal hope and happiness and life for us through Jesus Christ isn't that great Amen. let's pray then father thank you thank you for loving us and thank you for providing for all of our needs what a great God and Savior we have and today in the world that's filled with so much turmoil we can have peace we can have wonderful peace because peace does not come from circumstances. Peace comes from the giver of peace, the one who came and said, I bring you my peace, not as the world gives, but I bring you peace today that surpasses any human emotion, any human experience, that deep, deep peace in our hearts. Lord, if there are those here today and undoubtedly with a crowd this size there are those who may have never experienced what real peace is to know you and I pray that today our hearts will be open to say Jesus I receive you as my Savior I can't do it in myself and I come to you today to present myself to you and say Lord I believe that you're the answer to the needs of my life. You provided for the forgiveness of my sins. And today I ask you to forgive me. I ask you to cleanse me from every sin. I invite you into my life. And from this moment on, I am going to serve you. And I put my hand in yours today and trusting you to lead me into my eternal home. Lord, I pray that that prayer today is being offered by many hearts in this room and all the rest of us are affirming the fact that Jesus is here and uh, we open our hearts to receive the abundant grace and mercy and presence of our Lord. And for that we thank you in his wonderful name. Amen. God bless you.